Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion Node Breakdown. Today's node is the Particle Turbulence Node. So we're going to jump into Fusion where we've got a fresh emitter and we're going to add a P Turbulence and stick it in after our emitter. Now what the Particle Turbulence Node does is it creates like a frequency based chaos on the position of each particle, making the motion become unpredictable or, or uneven. And we can basically manipulate and change the strength and how it affects our particles. So jumping in the turbulence, if I go ahead and just play this back, you can see by default, we've got turbulence going on. And up top, we have the ability to change our random seed of the turbulence. We can select reseed or time lock. We can change the X, Y, and Z strength of our turbulence independently. And we can change the strength over life. So we can go from nothing to a lot of turbulence at the end of the life of our particles. And uh, let's jump in our particles and make sure we got a style and uh, some emitter controls going correctly. And we'll go to controls and we're going to give us like, say 200 particles. And our lifespan, we'll make sure it's long enough to cover our frames. So we'll make that 300. And I'm not going to change the velocity or anything. I'm going to let this uh, particle turbulence do the work. And let's change this variance up to say 50 and our number to say 20. All right. So this is what the particle turbulence node is doing. It's creating this disturbed noise throughout our, uh, our image or uh, throughout our particle system. So down here we have density and what this density does is it changes how dense the turbulent field is. So if we move this way down, you can see it's going to create these thicker, more defined waves of turbulence. And if we raise it up, it's going to be a little less defined. And if we crank it, it's just uh, kind of everywhere. Our conditions tab has the uh, standard conditions that all these particle nodes have. And this is the probability of this node actually affecting all the particles. So if we change this probability down, not all the particles are being affected. If we crank it up, then all the particles are being affected. And right here we have the condition over age. So can change this to kind of a ramp up as the age goes on. And down here we have our sets as we went over before, what sets contribute to this particle turbulence. Now our region tab over here is kind of like our region in our emitter. We can select how the region affects and we can select the region itself. So right now we have all selected on our region, which means our entire region is being affected by turbulence. But if we change this to say Bezier, we can come in here and draw a Bezier node. And once we change how our region mode is affected, you'll be able to see that change. So now it's only affecting what is inside our region. Even though it's extending out, these uh, particles kind of have a life of their own after. So once it's thrown out, it's going to continue with that turbulence. So we can go to when intersecting the region, when not intersecting the region, when not inside the region. So you can see it's not affecting stuff inside the region. When it's entering the region and we'd need some velocity to make this move through the region to be able to see that. 
and then these regions have their own controls kind of like they do in uh, the emitter node so we can change our size we can change the angle and we can change our offsets and I'm gonna skip bitmap but we've also got the cube and let me change our mode so we can say when it's inside the region so now if we play you can see it's affecting only what's inside that region we've also got line which honestly i'm not exactly sure what this does i've never been able to get a line as a region to work in this turbulence node so we're going to switch to rectangle and same thing right now we've got it set to when it's inside the region to affect it and we've got sphere so we can technically take this and say okay only when you're inside this region affect it everything else don't affect it so we can come up with some pretty cool looks based off this so if we go back to our emitter node and let's go to our style and let's go to our color controls and color over lifespan. Let's say, uh, kind of make this orangish. Add another one. Make this like a green. Add another one. Make this a dark green. And add another one. Let's make this like a yellow. So you can see we can kind of make some cool different effects. So let's go back to our turbulence and let's move this. There we go. So we can drop our density down a little bit. So that is the P turbulence node. Now I know I've got a few questions on, uh, on my intro particles and, uh, let me go to my intro. So these particles up, up here, how oh, I did that. Well, it's actually it was done in Houdini. So, uh, it was pretty simple. Um, but you can use your, uh, turbulence to create kind of the same thing. So we're going to go through here and reset all this stuff. And I'm going to go to region and pick all. So now we've kind of got all these particles going on, kind of like dust particles. But the one problem is with this, we can't just say, Hey, we want this amount of particles because it's spawning on every single frame. So what we need to do is first thing, if we go to our render and drop our pre-generate frames down, we can go to our emitter and get our number of particles that we want. And first we're going to up our lifespan and make sure we don't have any velocity, any variance or anything going on. So what we want to do is we want to get our initial number of particles we want to see. So if we want that many dust particles and actually let's go through here and we're going to change this to blob. And I'm going to go to my size controls and up the size of my blobs. So they're a little bigger dust particles. And we'll change our size variance up a little bit.
So what we need to do to make sure this isn't spawning new particles every frame is we're gonna add a keyframe on the first frame, go to our next frame and drop this down to zero. So now we're gonna have the same amount of particles going across our entire timeline and not generating new ones. And as long as we have our lifespan up, this particle will last throughout the whole thing. And then we can go into our turbulence and go to our controls and we can drop the strength a little bit so they're not flying around so fast. So let's do uh, 0 0.025, 0.025. 0 0.025 so they're just kind of meandering around so now we've got those particles we can simply take both of these copy them and instead of running these into the same render node I'm gonna do a new render node because on this render node I want to come in here and change my blur up a little bit to put that in a space and I'm going to add a new particle render node and input this and we will merge them. So let's bring this one to our background, our new one to our foreground, and we'll bring this into the merge. So on our new particle emitter, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the size and we're going to make these like two, make these huge. And go back to our controls and go to our first frame and let's change our number to like uh, 40. And I'm going to change the position since we uh, copied the same node, they're putting points in the same spot. So I'm going to change this position variance up a little bit. And we've already got our next keyframe to be zero since we copied that. So now our new particles will last throughout the entire time. But since these particles are one closer to the camera, we're going to say up our movement a little bit more since something closer to the camera would be moving faster. And uh, they're moving so fast, they're moving off our uh, our camera. But that's fine. You guys are getting the point. So let's go in here and then we can go to this render node and we can either change our blur up so it looks like they're closer to the camera or we can come into our style and we can Kind of uh, change our fade controls and change our uh, the look of our uh, blobs, but we're gonna leave it right there. So there we go, and you can continue to add layers and layers and layers of dust, and then add like different light stuff to it, different color backgrounds, and you can stick text in between. So some dust particles are going over it, some are behind it. So this is kind of the uh, concept behind my opening thing with the dust but it was just done in houdini and done with a camera in 3d with lighting and actual particle systems in a huge world so that's the only difference but you can achieve somewhat the same look so that is the particle turbulence node i will see you in the next node breakdown